After you kill a buck, there's two things that come next. First one is, what are you going to do with the meat? And the second one is, what are you going to do with the antlers? The natural tendency when you shoot a buck is to think about doing a head and shoulders mount. And these things are great in your office or in your den, but they tend to be expensive and they're large. So what we've started doing here is more and more European mounts. And taxidermists can do these for you, or you can look up on the internet, and I'm sure you can find all kinds of tips on how to do a European mount. In this next segment, I'm going to show you the steps that I took to turn Jordan's buck into a trophy worthy for the living room wall. I'm going to talk about the items that you need for doing a European mount. Of course, the first thing you need is some kind of a deer head. And I like to skin them out right away and get the hide off and get as much of the meat off as you can because it makes the boiling time a lot less, but it also tends to uh, produce less staining of the bone itself. Get that off just as soon as you can. I mean, if you can do it the evening after you kill the deer, that's great. If not, the next day is fine. Now let's talk about some of the items that I'm gonna be using here. I've got a basic turkey boiler, and I think Cabela's carries these. You might be able to find them even at some of the hardware stores, uh, depending on where you live and how big the hardware stores are, but a turkey boiler uh, is about perfect for this. This runs off an LP tank, it's portable, you can do it anywhere. You don't want to do it in the house. Let me give you a little word to the wise before you get started here. Outdoors is best, but in the shop is fine. Um, it's going to smell, and it's going to smell for a couple of days. So make sure it's someplace where you don't mind having a little bit of that odor. So the other items I got here are pretty simple. I've got a knife, which I basically use for scraping off whatever tissue is left after the first boiling. And I've got a little hook that I fashioned out of a piece of stiff wire, and I use this when I get into the, the nasal area of the deer, there's these spiral bones that are inside the uh, nasal cavity on the deer. You have to be really gentle in there because they're really pretty. You don't want to break them or tear them up. Uh, in fact, it makes for a really nice part of the, of the mound, but you've got to pick all the membrane out of there. And it takes a long time, probably takes 45 minutes to get it all cleaned up and out of there. But once you're done, it really does look nice. So these are the tools of the trade. There's not much to it. I use a little piece of wire and hook it around the handle on the, on the uh, pot and keep the deer from falling down deeper into the water. Uh, fill that thing up almost full and get it boiling. Put the head in and I'll boil it for, oh, a deer like this that's already been skinned out with no hide. Maybe boil for almost an hour. Uh, you can tell because the membranes and the cartilage in the nose and, and everything starts to shrivel up. And when it starts to shrivel up and curl, then you know it's time to pull it out and start to scrape and, and uh, go to work on removing the membranes from the deer. So it's really about a three-part process. You boil it, scrape it, clean it up, uh, put it in and boil it again, and then you're gonna go in and get the, everything out of the brain cavity. And you can pull that out through the back of the skull. Uh, so that's gonna be after the second boil. And then the third boil is just a cleanup. You know, the, the first boil might be an hour to hour and a half uh, sometimes. The second boil might be half an hour, uh, 40 minutes, and then the third boil might only be about 20 minutes and get everything just really cleaned up good. So here's the last piece that I use in doing the European mounts. It's a basting brush that you can get at most grocery stores. And this is 40% peroxide, uh, I guess it's a hair whitening or bleaching solution that they use at hair salons. What I do with this then is after boiling and letting the deer dry, and, and then I'll hang it out in the sun and I'll paint the 40% peroxide solution onto every part of the deer that's bone. I keep it off the antlers because it will bleach uh, basically whatever it touches. But I paint it on there nice and thick and I leave it in the sun, I let it hang in the sun for a day and then I'll come back again the next day and paint on, paint on another coating of the 40% peroxide solution, let it hang for another day. And that's the way to go, you know, using uh, a bleach or boiling it in a borax or something like that is pretty hard on the bone. It tends to make the bone soft. So I wait until the very end and then just use the peroxide solution to whiten up the bone. I mean, these things look really good when you're done. And we've got a couple of them that we've put up from last season. We put uh, the buck that drew shot flyers and the daggers. They're both up on the wall. So we'll put Jordan's buck up there next to it. And uh, I'm gonna put a link up on the, on the site right now to a website where we've been purchasing these wooden uh, display plaques. They're really nice, they're beautiful in fact. And, and I'd recommend them to you if you're looking for a way to display your European mounts in, in a really uh, dignified and, I think, artistic way. So European mounts are awesome. We love the head and shoulder mounts, and we'll keep doing them from time to time, but whenever we don't have the space or don't have the money in the bank account to do one, we're definitely going to go with the European mount.